we like to call it the supernatural hour. And now, our hosts. Hey, welcome to the Supernatural Hour podcast. I'm your host, Raven. This is Rogue. This is Doc. And I'm Chad. All right, main topic is brought to you by Utah Freeze Dried for Pets. You can find us online at utahfreezedriedforpets.com. So our main topic today is the Worthington House murder. And when I first heard of Worthington House, I don't know, to me it sounded like some old stately mansion in England, you know, in 1747. And, um, but it's actually very recent. It happened in 2002. A lady by the name of Krista Worthington, um, and it happened not in Cape Cod, but in a, like a suburb of Cape Cod called Truro, in Truro, Massachusetts. And she was a fashion writer, um, and she did fashion writing for for she was an A-list fashion writer, basically like Vogue and mm-hmm. yeah, some of those bigger kind of New York City life stuff. Yeah. Yep, very, very A-lister. She had done stuff with internationally with Paris and Milan and yeah, mm-hmm. lots of things. Yeah, and, and she would go to parties with Woody Allen and, and people like that. And um, so, you know, she's living her best life. She'd had kind of a troubled life. She'd had a little hard time with personal relationships. And we were watching one thing about her, and, and a, a friend of hers said that her life was full of regrets. And one of the things she regretted was not having children. So she actually had a baby at the age of 43, a little girl named Ava, and Ava was two and a half years old when she, when Krista was found murdered. Um, so what happened was one of her friends found her, and the friend was allegedly returning a flashlight. When I say allegedly, we're still not entirely sure who did this, but we'll we'll get there. I'm jumping ahead. Now, now he had been a former boyfriend. Yes. And he, when they found him, and maybe I'm skipping ahead, he was actually with his father when he was allegedly returning the flashlight. Right. Okay. And so he actually went to the door and knocked, and there wasn't an answer, and he was able to look through the window, and he saw Ava laying on the ground. And, you know, his first reaction wasn't, oh, she's dead, but, you know, maybe she's stripped and fallen or passed out. So he, he goes into the house and he picked up the baby and took her outside, gave her to the father, went back in to see if he could find a phone to call. Couldn't find a phone in the house. Actually had to go to a different house to make a phone call. Called the police. And you can find this recording online. And, you know, he basically says, you know, you need to send someone to this address, you know, to this house, um, you know, Krista Worthington's house, you know, I think she's dead. Um, and you, I am not a detective by any stretch of the imagination, but from my limited experience, he sounds legitimately shaken on the phone call, you know, kind of confused and, and you know, like he's in, a, you know, in haste. Get someone here. You know, there, something's not right. Um, and the sad thing is just the state of the baby. Um, the, you know, it had been at least 24 hours um, the, where she had been with her mother. Um, and, and she was about two and a half? She was two and a half. Um, you know, at first, I, I didn't even write down the name of the guy who found, looked for her. Wow. Researchers, not us. <laughs> but he. <laughs> not, not me. But um, at first he didn't see any blood. And, you know, just the way the body was situated and everything. Um, and when they, you know, kind of, while well, they were waiting for the policeman to come, um, one of the things that they noticed about the baby, she wasn't covered in blood, but she had blood on her. Um, some of the things that they noticed was... Um, blood on like her, like Ava's, the little girl her bloody handprints were on a Disney video that she tried to put in the VCR um, on her own sippy cup and they determined that she tried to feed her mother with the sippy cup um, 
They found Ava's fingerprints of blood on a box of Cheerios she was able to pull down from a counter. Um, She would tell the police, you know, mommy fell down. Um, And apparently uh, Ava was still nursing a little bit. And so when when this man found her, um, she was actually nursing when he went in. Uh, But the, the man that found her, when he gave Ava to his father, he said, um, I just found Ava, or I just found Krista. I think she's D-E-A-D. He didn't even want to say it in front of her daughter. Um, when they found her, she had been stabbed to the chest so deeply that the blade had gone in and nicked the floor underneath her. And she'd been beaten. She'd been raped. It was, it was pretty nasty. Um... I guess her cell phone was on the floor by her, um, and it had the digit nine punched in it. Like she'd been trying to call nine one one and just couldn't finish that phone call. It's like if she could have just gotten two more numbers in, um, oh. they may have been able to find out who did it. Now, one of the interesting things about this whole situation, and, and we'll get to to who they put in jail. But it's not even really definitive that he's the guy that did it. They're still even not sure. There's some people that say they put the wrong person in jail. And part of the problem is just all the contamination of evidence. Uh, You know, the people running in, because the guy that found her, you know, ran through the house trying to find a phone. And I guess when he ran off to try to find a phone somewhere else, um, his father went in trying to find a phone. Um... (coughs) And then Ava, I mean, she's two and a half. You can't blame her, um, you know. So any evidence that could have been there, you know, it was just really hard to find and, and contaminated. Yeah, and one of the things they said that she was wearing, like there, there was a, a green cloak or a green coat or something that was at the crime scene, but it didn't get documented with the with the evidence. And, you know, people, you know, testified about it being there in their interviews, mm-hmm. but there it wasn't collected. There was some... Shoddy collection. Right. And one of the issues that they they talked about is just this was such a peaceful little area and that there hadn't been any violent crime in there since like the 1950s, I think 1958. Yeah, the last murder was like 1958. And the. So that crime detective scene's really up, you know, on the newest. (laughs) Right. (laughs) The newest procedures. Predating DNA evidence, and we're not even sure what they're doing. So just with, you know, out of practice a little bit. So with the contamination of evidence and then just lack of... I guess they finally did bring some people in from Boston. Yeah, the state. To, to help try to figure it out. Um, but I think, you know, kind of what I want to talk about a little bit are the different people that could have done it. And there's a lot. Like we said before, she, uh, Krista, just did not... She was not lucky in love and just had a bunch of... Not so great partners. Yeah, and not even that they that they weren't great. Great, just she just didn't have very good luck. Um, so one of the guys named was Tim Arnold. He was actually a former boyfriend, and he was an author. Uh, wrote several books. Uh, one was a children's book titled "The Winter Mittens," and they dated for about a year. And uh, he actually continued to help her take care of Ava even after they broke up so it wasn't an ugly relationship and um, and he was actually the one that that found her so Tim Arnold I did write it down yay me Mm -hmm. Um, but after some investigation they did clear him they said no you know he's not but he was he was actually one of them the one that I thought was interesting was Christopher Toppy Worthington and this was her father she and her father did not have the best relationship um, he was a person of interest for quite a long time. He was a Harvard-educated lawyer, and he was a civil prosecutor. Um, had been, he wasn't at the time, uh, for the state attorney general's office. And at the time of her murder, um, he was 72 at the time, and he was in a relationship with a gal named Elizabeth Porter, who was 29. Um, she had a colorful life. She was a former prostitute and heroin addict. And for obvious reasons, Krista wasn't too thrilled with this. 
um, and you know was very upset with her father about this relationship. Um, and uh, I don't, they weren't married; they were just having a relationship. But he was supporting her financially, and Krista did not approve of this at all. Um, so you almost wonder if why Elizabeth wasn't. But wouldn't the little girl have known it was Grandpa? Didn't the little girl see mm. anything? You would think so. And they questioned her, you know, about as well as you can question a two and a half year old. I've seen uh, not snippets about this case in particular, but, you know, different cases where they interview small, small children. And it's hard to get information from them. Sure. But you almost wonder, Elizabeth Porter is not one of the suspects that I found listed. You would, I have watched enough IDTV that, that those girlfriends can definitely have issues. But um, all the suspects were men. So, yeah, so, so, so Daddy. Well, there was that DNA evidence. Yeah, so she was raped. <laughs> There's that. You know, so, so there is that. But. Kind, kind of makes the girl less of a suspect than the... But she could at least be on there and then be cleared. Yeah, one of the things that's interesting to me is just how brutally she was murdered and then they didn't touch the kid. Like, they let the kid just do her thing. Yeah, the kid may have been up asleep in the other room. Right. I mean, may not have been witness witnessed to it. what happened, yeah. but it's just one of those things. There's such a weird polarization there where it's like stabbed, raped, murdered, and then there's like kid eating Cheerios trying to pop a bloody VHS into the VCR or whatever. I mean, right. and then you wonder too, um, did they know the child was there but didn't have a beef with the child right. and, and at least had enough moral compass to not kill an innocent child right but then you go well who would have a moral compass to do that to a woman <laughs> yeah know? well yeah someone well, that you're really angry at yeah obviously. yeah no. you know, you'll kill the two-year-old's mother who's going to take care of her now um so the one that we want to talk about there was actually quite a few suspects most of them were cleared but the one that actually went to jail was a fellow by the name of christopher mccowan and there is a lot, a lot on the internet about him. Um, when we did the research on it, this was, it was really hard to find a whole lot of information about this. Um, but you could find a lot of information on Christopher McCowan. Um, I almost wanted to change the topic to Christopher McCowan, what did or didn't he do? <laughs> but we didn't. So he was actually um, a garbage man in the area. And it's a, it's a smaller area. Most people know it. Now, one thing about her home is where her home was, you had to know where it was to go there. You're not going to just stumble ac across it. Um, you know, it wasn't a, a crime of... Um, opportunity. Opportunity. It wasn't, oh, hey, here's a house. Let's go right. see what's inside. Um, you had to know where to go to get there. And uh, he had actually had... Um, a little bit of a colored past, you know, had some, some sexual assaults and, and some things that when they said, okay, let's look into his past and what happened to Krista, it wasn't a big shocker. You know, they, they lined up. It was plausible that he did pretty those well. things. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, he was, so when this went down, they actually, cause they, you know, they did the, the rape kit on her during the autopsy and found that there was, um, evidence of a rape. And so they went to the townsmen and they said, okay, we need you all to give a DNA sample. And quite a few of them did. And they actually didn't get around to testing all of them because they just didn't have the resources and the time to do that at the time. Um, but several people came forward. He was one of them. That voluntarily came forward. That voluntarily came forward. And, I mean, that alone doesn't clear you. <laughs> right. You would think. Because I would think, if you, but <laughs> there were a lot of men that were like, nope, we're not doing it. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, why? What else have you done? If you didn't kill her, <laughs> right. what What's else have you done? That, show? Exactly. Um, <coughs> so, but when they, they did run a few of the DNA tests, and his actually matched the evidence that they found on her, uh, you know, according to the rape. And so they're like, okay. You done it. We got our guy. But he claims that it was consensual. 
and he says, you know, in the course of, of doing his duties, you know, he went in, and I don't remember if he said she asked him to come in for some reason, um, and they were talking, one thing turns to another, they're doing the, they're doing the deed, but he says it was consensual. So instead of it being a rape, there was a consensual sexual event prior to her murder. Yes. Involving two different people. Um, there was some discrepancies, though, because first he says he didn't know her outside of the the trash route, but then he says, oh, no, we had a consensual. So there is that little discrepancy. Um it was later that he admitted, and so it's like, are you nervous, and you're and you're claiming you don't know, but then you fess up. I don't know. With the garbage guy. Um, so McCowan told police that there was another man named Jeremy Fraser that was also there that night, and that the two of them beat Worthington, but Fraser had killed her. So he claims he's innocent, but yet he says he was there, and another man was there. Um, they actually found fingerprints of McCowan on a blanket because uh, there was a blanket close by. Um, That's not a good defense though. Like We just beat her up real bad. But and someone o- else killed that her. That other guy killed her. But I didn't know her. Yeah, so for me, if I'm a police But we had consensual this, sex and <laughs> yeah. then I beat and her then up. I beat her up. Yeah, that makes perfect With sense. With a friend. And he's the one that killed her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I guess it was at the trial uh, his defense attorney at the time, said McCowan and Worthington had consensual sex on Thursday before she was murdered, um, when he was there at her house for a regular trash pickup, and she was actually discovered on Sunday. And McCowan later told 2020 he lied to police about not knowing her to protect her reputation. Um, But police believe that McCowan went to Worthington's house alone the night that she was killed. But he has uh, long maintained his innocence. He, to this day, as far as I know, I mean, you know, because I chat with him on a regular basis. <laughs> pen pals, pen pals. Uh, um, but he still, to this day, maintains his innocence. But it's like, how can you be innocent if you said you beat her up and that this Fraser guy killed her and your DNA is all over her? And it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense <laughs> to me. No, it does not. See, it's just even giving me a headache right now. <laughs> I couldn't be a detective. I'd listen to like right? a couple of things of testimony. I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm out." I'm gonna go chase some butterflies and unicorns now. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I well, was, that's a really sad situation. It really is, and so you know, to this day, I don't think anybody really has any definitive evidence, um, just because of of just the contamination of the the site and everything. Um, Sounds to me like there's some pretty good definitive evidence. Yeah, and they convicted him, right? He's in jail? Yeah, yeah he's in prison. Yeah. He's trying to get a retrial. Yeah, but. yeah he's, he's working on the retrial. Some people think he's innocent. Some people think that he's, he's being straight up, but... Some people thought Ted Bundy was innocent, too. I know. Very charismatic. <laughs> there's lots of people that think lots of people are innocent that the preponderance of evidence doesn't seem to support that idea. Oh, I seen they're bringing the Scott Peterson case back up. Are they really? Now, yeah, his sister or somebody or trying is she feels that she has enough evidence now to prove that somebody else. Uh, I, I could not do this line of work. I really couldn't drive me nuts. Yeah, right. Um. So. Just one last little thing about McCowan. He says he found Worthington attractive, and this is a quote. She had something with her, unquote, and that being near her in her home, one thing just led to another. Oh, yes. The hots turned into a killing, apparently. Garbage man just knocks on my door all the time. Right. Hmm. Yeah, seems shady as hell. So there's actually... Oh, Oh, go ahead. What happened to the little girl, do we know? So she is actually being raised by, um, I think their names were Jacksons. I think they were friends of hers. Oh. Because she was on the outs with her parents, with her dad? Yeah. The she lawyer was a- who was a murder suspect? Yeah. Probably not. With the yeah. 29-year-old 
heroin addict, addict heroin, prostitute. Yeah. Yeah, probably not a great relationship. Yeah, probably not. That's not who you want model. raising your child. It's <laughs> yeah, not who I you think, got put down as your. I think we're going to find somebody else on that will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's the name. Not Custody Jackson. Custody of my children. Um, Susan Jacket. It looks like the the lady who is raising Ava. But Ava now would be like 23 or 24 years old, so she's probably raising herself now. Yeah. Hopefully um, she's normal. Right. So we are not a crime podcast, right? At two and a half, I wouldn't think you'd remember very much, honestly. Nope. Hopefully, but it's in the news so much and with her feeding her mom and doing being so involved kind of in the case, I, 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 you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, there might be some memories that have been reinforced, but I would think that... Because I try to think of... I mean, I didn't have anything that traumatic happen when I was two and a half. But I right? don't remember being two and a half. Maybe one little snippet here and there. Right. So we're not a, a crime podcast, right? We're supernatural. So what's the supernatural bent here? Mm. I will tell you what the supernatural bent is here. Um, so this was... this. This little bit is um, from Susan Jacket, the lady that uh, ended up taking care of Ava. She just went on to say how much this little girl was wanted and how much Krista wanted to be mother. <clears throat> and she was a single mother. She was single the whole time. I'm, I'm not even sure we know who the father is. Um, I don't know that I ever ran across that in the, in the little teeny bit that is available online. Um, but Susan said that if you went to... Krista's house she said the yard was just a jumble of toys uh, stoves refrigerators wheelbarrows baby carriages and I've seen pictures inside the home and it wasn't um, it wasn't like a hoarder house or it wasn't filthy but there was just a lot of stuff she doted doted on this little girl she said we you go inside every available surface was covered with toys or little boxes of cereal or treats um, pacifiers everywhere she said you'd go in and on the main stairway there'd just be stacks of children's books. Um, the banister had fishnet over it, you know, to keep Ava from falling through the banister. Um, and she said at the time of the murder, which I think was in February, but the Christmas tree was still up. And um, it was a few days before Christmas, Worthington went to a dinner at a friend's house. Um, trying to see when. No, this murder took place on January 6th. So, you know, the Christmas tree is still up, obviously, because she couldn't take it down. Um, but Worthington went to dinner at a friend's house in the village just, you know, a week or so before she was murdered. And, you know, as, as you do at all parties, and I'm sure you go to an A-lister party with people in Cape Cod, it's probably pretty fancy, but the adults are talking and the kids are off, you know, frolicking and doing what they're doing for a Christmas party. And um, Krista had a friend by the name of Terry Reed. And he said, I remember very clearly that Krista was talking and she stopped in mid-sentence. And she just, every friend that she had said she doted on this little girl. And um, Terry Reed says, I remember her saying, I can't stand it. She's too adorable. She said, I was supposed to wait for Christmas, but I can't. And at that point, she brought out a shopping bag and gave Ava one of her Christmas presents was... Christmas presents, which was a pink tulle tutu. And, you know, Ava loved it. It was so cute. You know, she's two and a half and she's got this pink frothy little tutu. So she puts it on and she continues, you know, happy dancing and twirling and playing with the kids. And as she did that, um, Krista just went on to her friends, you know, isn't she amazing? And they said that with all the relationships in her life that just went poorly and came and went and she never felt stable in a in a relationship with a man, Ava was the one relationship in her life that just stayed perfect and, and stayed. Not only was it a perfect relationship, but it, it, was, um, it was one that she maintained and was always there. And then going back to Susan Jacket, um, she said, since, since her mother died, uh, Susan's mother, um, she personally had been on a spiritual path, reading books about life after life and, and what went on you know, at once people passed. And she said, it just put me in this frame of mind about uh, you know, my friend Krista. 
And she says, I honestly, this is from the friend, she says, I honestly don't think Krista's spirit left the house until the police got there. She said, you know, in her, just deep in her heart, she said, I know Krista and I know that she would not have left that little girl alone, you know, to fend for herself. Um, And she said, I think she just stayed there that night looking over her baby. She just hovered. And she said, it wouldn't surprise me if Krista stayed with her daughter until she knew that she was safe. And not even just safe in that moment, but until she knew that she was safe as an adult. And this is, you know, people say, well, why would spirits stay? You know, why do you go ghost hunting? Why wouldn't a ghost just go right to heaven? This is one of those instances Mm -hmm. that we've discussed where, you know, that mother loved that child so much, she's not going to pass and go, I'm out, see you, Ava. And she would stay with her until she felt comfortable. And was that a week? Was it five years? Was it ten years? Is she still with Ava now? Well, we don't know. Right, you're kind of torn between, do I stay here? Do I move on? Mm-hmm. And like you said, with a two and a half year old baby that you decided to have pretty late in life because you really wanted a child. And by yourself. Yeah, that's an awful lot of... of Commitment? Love, commitment, and just dedication, right? You wouldn't want to move on from that, I'm sure. Right. And, you know, where you're just, you know, I keep using the word doting, but that's the word that just speaks to me right now. But you dote on this child, and she is literally your life breath. And, I mean, she's two and a half years old, and she's still nursing, for heaven's sakes. I mean, that's that's a very intimate, you know, mother-child bond. And I can't imagine that just being broken instantly. I did look around to see if there had been any sightings, and I didn't, you know, I, I looked every which way. This was the only paranormal aspect I could find, but it's a, it's a very strong one, and it's one that, you know, we have run into this on investigations. We have run into a, a, teen, a male teenage spirit that didn't want to cross over, or hadn't crossed over, because he and his father had had a very bad relationship, and he was afraid to have to face his father in the next life. And that's why he had stayed. Um, we have run into spirits that didn't believe in an afterlife, and when suddenly there was one, they thought, well, dang, <laughs> now we're afeared to go over because we haven't necessarily lived the, the kind of life we probably should have. Um, so it's, yeah, it's definitely very interesting. That's one reason why I like to ghost hunt, is to find out why the spirits that haven't crossed haven't. Yeah, it doesn't seem like an, just a rubber stamp automatic process. Right. Well, I think it comes down to the idea of agency we've talked about before that, you know, we have agency and we can do things. And as we move on from, you know, the the physical realm here, um, you know, do we have to move on or or can we choose to stay with our loved ones? And that's an interesting it's an interesting question. But the idea of, oh, no, you know, you're dead and you have to move on and there's nothing now. You might not be able to interact with them. You might not be able to do that, but you still have that agency possibly to stay and do that, and you don't have to move on. And so, you know, entities and spirits may may stay with their loved ones, even if there's nothing that they can really do, but they can observe and, and, mm-hmm. and try. Right. I know when I very first started ghost hunting, and not even not even when I started, go- well, yeah, but my my thought on ghosts was all ghosts are evil spirits, and they're all trying to deceive us. But the right. more, exactly. But the more I've gotten into it, and the more that I've seen some stuff, and I I could be wrong. I tell people all the time I could die, and God could pat me on the head and go, "Oh, look how cute you are, trying to figure things out. You were so wrong. You were talking to evil spirits that whole time." I, like you know, that could happen. <laughs> but you know, just the idea of what Chad was saying with the agency, and saying, you know what, I have passed on, but I don't want to go to that other dimension yet. I want to stay in this realm, you know, for whatever reason. And I don't know what kind of, you know, that's one reason we ghost hunt. Why, why, you know, what, at some point do you have to go? Um, You know, why have you chosen to stay? What happens if you stay? Right. And to your point too, I mean, by definition, ghosts would be, they're us. I mean, I think the general populace is good for the most part. I think most individuals are generally well-intentioned neutral at worst there are some people who are just terrible and they're the ones who make news headlines by murdering people (laughs) but 
you know, if you think about, oh, I'm interacting with a ghost, the probability of that ghost being an evil spirit is probably lower than we're thinking. Right. Because right. if you think, at least in in um, in our religion, uh, the doctrine is that only one third of the host of heaven was evil. So that leaves two thirds that are just people, you know, in varying degrees of jerkiness. Or goodness. Or goodness. <laughs> That's right. We all have our moments. Crankiness, cranky ghosts. Yeah, but I, I agree with you. I think that in general, most people are good people that just want to feed their families and have relax a little on the weekend and, and, and be they, good people. And, and most they, ghosts are good ghosts. If they and, die and they don't want to move on. Yeah, and it might be they're confused. It might be there's unfinished business. It might be, um, you know, could be that they, they're they just unsure of what's out there. Right. You know, I, I know what it is. I know that I'm here now. I don't know what happens if I go through that bright light. I'm scared to move on. It's really interesting with that idea of, you know, spirits, you know, our, 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 our human spirits having that opportunity to stay around. And it's not just, you know, it's not just Christian, you know, lore. It's, it's pervasive across all sorts of different religions and, and cultures and everything that those are there. There's kind of the idea of the, the other evil spirits also, but of the of the the ghosts the spirits of the people you know who have passed having you know unstained and trying to finish unfinished business oh yeah you hear stories all the time of you know someone who's passed and and they've presented themselves to someone who's really struggling with their passing or you know coming to warn them or there's just too many stories out there Um, going back to Krista Worthington, though, there is a movie, it came out in 2017, so fairly recently, called Murder on the Cape. It's based on this story. It's not a documentary. It's a, it's a movie. Very loosely based. So when you watch this... It's not a documentary. It's not okay. a documentary. <laughs> Fictionalized. Um, there is a really good, on YouTube, it was a... 2020 CBSC kind of a yeah podcast <coughs> yeah there was a podcast um, like deal. six or eight parts it was very good mm-hmm. um, you know it's it's a pod it's on YouTube it's a podcast you just stare at the same picture for hours kind of like our podcast on, on YouTube <laughs> <laughs> only we do, we do change pictures but <laughs> we have some movement we have some movement on ours. So, um, and I have not watched this, but um, I'm interested in watching this. And so I think we might just, just for something to watch. All right. That wraps up our main topic. Alas, but not least, get your Supernatural Hour swag at advancedparanormal.com. All sorts of awesome stuff. Mugs, shirts, tapestries, you name it. Advancedparanormal.com. Also at advancedparanormal.com, you can check out our shop that carries our sage sprays, our rollers, our lip balms. We've got all kinds of good stuff. All right. Stay spooky, my haunty friends. Love you, Nicholas. Have a good one. Hey, have a good night. You've been listening to the Supernatural Hour at advancedparanormal.com. The Supernatural Hour is part of the Radio Ronin Network found at radioronin.com. Copyright 2021 by Advanced Paranormal Services.